Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frank. Today is the video a lot of you have been asking for uh, for quite a while. Um, my Cura settings. And this is all we're going to talk about. We're not going to talk about print orientation really, um, unless it applies to how I might adjust my settings. We're not talking about anything else. Uh, what parts are going to be printing? Um, just my settings. What do I do and what do I adjust to get smooth prints or fast prints or stable prints? Because all three of them are very different things. So if you're familiar with Cura, um, you can see all over here, you know, there's the, this is the newest version of Cura. This is a 4.6.0 beta. Um, I think 4.6.1 is currently out too. And I, it, there's really no difference. A couple bug fixes. And if you've been messing with Cura, all this will make sense to you. You have your, you know, your layer height, which is going to determine your quality. And that obviously, if you go with a bigger layer height, that means your layer lines are going to be bigger and you might lose a little bit of quality. As you get smaller layer lines, they get a little closer together. They won't be as visible, you, but it's going to increase the time. Obviously, a layer height of 0.28 is going to um, double, you know, be half the time of a layer height of, you know, 1.2. Kind of simple math. Your infill or how much how much is actually filled in your print really matters. So let's do max layer height with, you know, uh, almost no infill. So what, that's 10% and we'll just get rid of those real quick and we'll slice it. 10 hours, 19 minutes for this faceplate, which uh, I, in all honesty, isn't really that bad. But again, that's at like a maximum layer height for my 0.4 millimeter nozzle and a, you know, a halfway decent infill. So let's see, that's not bad. There's absolutely zero support. So this would never actually survive and it'd be pretty funny to watch it print. But let's see what happens if we go to the maximum quality and we do something like a hundred percent infill <laughs> oh my god two hours and <laughs> two days and three hours with almost more than double the filament that is ridiculous <laughs> for a faceplate on an ender three um so <laughs> i i unless you're uh ufc fighting with this mask i don't i would never, never do a hundred percent infill pretty much anything uh when it comes to cosplay but <laughs> That's uh, that's obscene. 1,700 layers. Wow. <laughs> Let's see. And most of that time is skin. Yeah, just the surface, really. Um, so, yeah. So, depending on your settings, obviously, you can dr drastically increase your print time. So, the first settings I'll go over is what I print on my Ender. So, this is my normal Ender 3, and I'm using the stock 0.4 millimeter nozzle that came with it, and standard PLA. I will float between PLA and PLA plus. The settings are pretty similar. You're just going to adjust um, temperature more than anything. So let's move over to the custom settings that usually scares everybody. So right here is where I'll make my first choice. What am I printing? Am I printing a face mask that, in all honesty, doesn't have a lot of detail? Um, I use that electric palm sander I always rave about. So I'll consider the print. How quickly can I smooth this down? Do I have to worry about layer lines? This is a pretty big open surface. Smoothing this is not going to take long at all, a, a minute or two at most. But say we had something like this, like an arc reactor with a lot of small little detailed pieces. Using a palm sander on here really isn't going to um, isn't really going to be feasible. So you're going to want something of a more you know higher setting detail and quality to kind of you know take care of a lot of that that the the fine details you see. So this is what the choice you have to make. Can you sand it really quick, or can you? Or is it going to be something you're going to want to actually have detail with? So let's do this. We'll move this off the bed so it doesn't slice, and we'll leave this loaded. So let's move you back there, and then we don't have to worry about that. And then, so the faceplate, I would never do a super quality on this. There's no point. I can sand this down. I, I'll run a standard. And honestly, I, I've ran low quality before. And I'm going to just discard all my other settings. I don't, I don't care about them because we're going to go through all that. So my quality selected. And then you have my layer height. That's stock. My shell, I'm leaving that stock. Infill. So I used to run about a 5 to 10% infill using quarter cubic or cubic but I've recently switched to using anywhere from 5 to 10% with gyroid infill. And gyroid infill is really cool. The way it uh, distributes the weight, the way it actually prints, and uh, you'll look, we'll look at it at the preview. But gyroid seems to be my go-to, and it's really strong. Now, you can read up about the shape and like the, the uh, geometry of a gyroid and just how it applies to 3D printing. It's actually kind of neat. 
So I'll actually leave open the settings that I did change. This way you guys can like see and screenshot it. Material. So this is just you getting familiar with your material. Now the mono price and Sunlu PLAs I print with, I usually print with black or gray. They really like about 215. Um, it sticks well, it bonds, the layers are great. So I'll run, but this is something you have to figure out for yourself. What PLA, what settings work the best for you when it comes to your temperature. And my bed likes to be around 60 and it sticks pretty well. Speed. Now I will run anywhere between a 50 and a 70 on my Ender with a faceplate like this. Now I want you to consider something. Where's most of the motion on an Ender 3 gonna be? So the bed is gonna be moving this way on the Y axis, right? And it's gonna be wobbling the faceplate back and forth. However, most of the motion is gonna be across your X axis, left and right, left and right, left and right. So oh, I will always try to orient my print along the Y axis. So if I was gonna print this arc reactor here, I would print it like, <clears throat> I would print it like this. I wouldn't orient it opposing my my y axis cuz now my bed is going to do more movements and my x gantry is my x axis isn't going to. So you always want to try to orient your print along the, the x because your x your nozzle can move faster than your bed can. So if I was to print this even on a high quality, I'd run that at a 70, maybe even an 80 because it's a smaller print. But something for the like the face mask, it's a little bit taller. I don't want to risk any wobble. So this, I'd probably do a 60 on that. Uh, maybe I can get away with the 70, but you just want to always consider how your bed's moving. Enders are pretty notorious for getting a little bit of banding at the higher tops of the print just because it only has the single lead screw. So let's run that at a 60. Travel. I will. I always have retraction enabled, and I always do Z-hop when retracted. It's just something I do. It stops the, the nozzle from colliding with anything, and it's been working out so far. So we'll leave that on. Cooling, yeah, I want parts cooling. Support, <laughs> so we're gonna generate support, and we're gonna talk about tree supports in a minute, but uh, for now, let's just do normal support. I always do my supports everywhere. Somebody just recently asked me, how did I get supports only in the eyes? And if you only have the, the support placement touching build plate, it's only gonna generate supports where it can touch the build plate. Now, if I do everywhere, what it's gonna do is it's gonna actually generate supports inside the eyes, places that wouldn't touch the build plate, but it still needs supports. So I'll leave that on. And this is another thing um, you kinda need to know your printer for because I can actually do an overhang angle of 70 on my print, my ender. Um, I trust it enough and I have my temperature dialed in enough where I don't get much uh, sag or drooping. My bridge, my bridge settings are like the temperature and printer are dialed in pretty well. So I can usually run a 60 to a 70 overhang angle, but I, I will adjust this for other reasons and I'll show you that in a minute. In my support density, I use like a three. Your supports don't need to be that thick. Build plate adhesion. Depending on what I'm printing, I'll use a raft or a brim. I love rafts, especially for tall prints. It gives it more stability and it's just, it's a safer print. So I'll always use a raft. I'll float anywhere between a 10 and a 15 raft margin. And what that's gonna mean is how far out does the raft come from the print in the support material. So it'll actually make a ring around the entire print and it just gives it more stability. If you have problems with your raft lifting up, drop your top layer down and what that'll do is it'll give you a thinner raft, but it won't be as susceptible to curling. It'll just be a thinner, nice platform for your print to stick to. So this is how I would print this one. Don't have a dual extrusion. I don't have any special modes selected, but I do have some experimental modes, tree supports. So I'll float sometimes between tree supports and normal supports, but what you have to remember is to turn one of them off. Now, if I turn off normal supports and I turn on tree supports, you'll notice that these settings popped back up even though normal supports isn't entered. It's because the tree supports still go off of these settings. So if you don't modify these settings or touch them, your tree supports are gonna just do whatever stock did. So you need to remember, even if you select tree supports, these still apply to that feature and don't leave both of them on. I think it prioritizes one, but I'm not exactly positive and I think I, it can mess up your support generation. So for a faceplate, just because it's a taller, straighter print, I actually don't use tree supports on it. I trust normal supports with it and it just comes out looking cleaner. So with those settings, let's slice. 
14 hours, 49 minutes, and 107 grams. That's not that's not too bad. But let's take a look at the print. Wow, not bad. Okay. So you can see right here, it made some of the supports in the eyes. And it comes down like this. It actually looks like a kind of cool mask like that, right? And there's not much support needed at all. This was actually like a perfect orientation for a mask. However, let's inspect it a little bit better. And what I'll do is I'll always move down to like the top couple, the first couple layers on a tall print. And I'll actually inspect it. So what's going to happen as we build this print? And if you click this, click right here, you can actually use your keyboard to build up slowly as you examine it. Layer by layer. Now, look right here. Look how much this builds up before it actually even touches anything. Now, this might go well. This might go just fine for you. But I have face masks fail all the time because of this little dinky support right here that just can't support the weight of this. If it, it, This gets knocked off all the time. I don't trust that. I don't trust that one freaking bit. So you can do two things in this, this, uh, this, op, in this situation. You can reorient your print and I will spend literally hours sometimes finding the perfect orientation for a print. So let's rotate this forward just a little bit. And while I'll rotate it, I'm gonna pay attention where my red is, because that's where my supports are going to want to be generated. So let's grab the red and rotate it forward just a little. Let's see, something like that, maybe? And what I can do is I can actually almost flatten this down and give it a couple areas to bite and lean on the bed. So let's see, let's generate that. 15 hours, 39, and 106. So my time went up, but let's look at our stability now. All right, so it kind of got rid of some of the supports in the eyes. It added these two really long ones right there. I'm not really a big fan of those, but it, they might survive. But let's look down here. And as you can see, the entire bottom of the face mask is now supported. It's building it all up as one layer, and I, I trust that much better. And it's going to give the print a much bigger survivability. So I'll just always mess around. Make sure you preview your prints to see, like, hey, like, does this have a chance of surviving? Because Cura doesn't factor in gravity. It doesn't understand gravity and weight and movement in the sense that things can wobble and rotate. So you need to be able to pay attention to these. But what I was talking about before is there's another option you could do, and it, it scares a lot of people. So let's get this back to the original orientation. Now, sorry, there's three options. I, I misspoke. You can adjust your overhang angle. Right now it's looking for 70 degrees. Well, what if we make this 50? Now it wants to support everything right there. But what that's also going to do, it's going to add more supports to other angles of your print. Now you can use support blockers and block these out because, you know, I didn't need, I don't, I don't need a support here. I, you know, I trust my printer. I don't need a support here. You can also completely scale up your support blockers too, just like normal prints and cover that whole section, which is totally fine if you want to do it that way. So that might be a feasible option, but if you don't want to deal with adding support blockers and you want to maintain that 70 you can add custom supports. And there's a lot you can do with this, but just for the base, basic usage, what you can do is go right in here, and I'm just gonna drop some custom supports right about there. And I, there's, like I said, there's a lot you can do with these, but I'm gonna drop two and two, and I'm gonna slice. 14 hours, almost 15, and it's about the same amount of filament we were using before. All right, so there we go. So it actually added support exactly where we want it to. So now that's going to increase the survivability of this print. So as it builds up, it has something to lean against right here. And that looks pretty good. <laughs> I'd, be I'd be totally okay with that. And actually, <laughs> this is actually a better orientation of uh, the faceplate than I've, I've normally used. So I'm... um. I'm actually kind of happy I did this. Let's get rid of that one. So that looks pretty good. Uh, and again, you can you can reorient, you can adjust, you can tilt, you can build your own custom supports. They're not that hard to work with. And just like support blockers and just like um, the print itself, you can scale them and move them and really do anything you want with them to just mess them around. And you can actually use them to like support parts and it can get really, it can get crazy with what you can do with these things. 
So that's what I would do on like a, uh, a lower quality print, something I just want to get printed fast on an Ender 3. But let's get rid of the face mask and let's bring, but let's move out the face mask. Let's move you over here and let's bring in the reactor. So this is exactly how I would print this reactor. Um, if you print it, if I, if I was to print it, let me move the mask a little bit out of the way. It's going to block my camera. If I was to try to print it something like flat, I'm going to get a lot of weird top layers. And real quick, even if I move to a, let's do a super quality, you know. So I'm going to keep basically all the settings I have. I'm going to use the same infill, same density, same temperature, all of it. it it's still all going to be the same. So let's slice that. 10 hours, 42 grams. But let's look at the preview. And you guys will see the top layer in all of this. Huh, it actually generated support in there. Look at that. So you can see all in here. It's going to make this whole top layer probably look a little weird. This isn't as bad as the other arc reactors I printed. Um, the angles in here aren't too bad. But in here is going to look a little weird. The front right here is going to look a little weird. I can save myself the trouble of having all this weird detail. And you actually see the raft all around this. And this is that 15 millimeter margin we were talking about. It'll, it's fi about 15 millimeters from the base of the print. So you can adjust this to 30. You can adjust this to 1. Um, I usually, like I said, float between a 10 and a 15. And then the raft top layer is literally the layer of the raft. So I'm not the biggest fan of that. Um, you might be, but what we're going to do is we're going to rotate that back up and we're going to slice it again. 13 hours, 53 grams. So it's using more support. It's using more um, support material. However, now instead of all that top layer issues, your only top layer is back here. And this is fine to be flat. It was flat to begin with. But it's going to give you a much better resolution and detail in all these little grooves and crevices, especially down here. Let's get rid of helpers and so especially in these areas right here, it's just gonna it's just gonna be a much cleaner, nicer looking print as it builds up because it can it can compensate and deal with all those little edges a lot better. So those are my settings for an Ender three. All right, that's how I let's, that's what I use on my actual Ender. But let's move to something that can print a little bit bigger, a little bit faster, and has a different nozzle on it. So we're gonna move to my CR ten S. And what's cool is Cura will keep the settings you have kind of pre-selected, even if they're all modified. You, you, they'll change as you go through and you know unselect them. So we'll close everything up, and then we'll kind of I'll show you as I go through again what I look for. So let's move this back there. Let's load in something a little bit bigger than a face mask. We'll do actually I don't know. We'll do the whole main helmet. All right. I love Thingiverse files. They load so quick. So here we have a pretty big helmet, um, three th free thing inverse file, one I always use and rave and rant about. So this is cool. So in other videos, I've talked about print orientation and I talked about it even earlier in this video. So print orientation, we're looking at this. Some people might send this and it's just, to me, it's such a waste of material and time. Without adjusting anything, we'll slice. One day, nine hours, half a roll of filament. Look at all that support, oh my God. That's ridiculous. That is a, that is just, I don't know. That's a huge waste to me. Um, a quarter of the time is just spent in supports and there's just a lot more that can go wrong. You have 673 layers and your support is, your support is building up until almost the top, the top couple layers. So let's not do that. Let's do what I always do and flip this like a bowl. And this is again where I'll really pay attention to where all the red is. So I'll go through my settings first and figure out what I want. Um, on, again, on a big helmet like this, a lot of surface to sand, a couple details, but I'm using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, which means I'm not going to have the super quality, but I have a much bigger layer height. And I don't like that this says draft quality because this is actually what I'll use most of the time. I'll use a 0.3, maybe I'll change this to a 0 0.30 um, layer height. And that's huge, that's a thick layer height. But this is what I printed most of my suit in and you couldn't, the, the prints came out pretty smooth. So I'll leave that, 
we'll leave the shell on wall thickness again 10 percent 5 percent gyroid um helmets i usually do a 10 just so they're, they're a little bit more robust because uh, they will they might have motors and hinges on them they get handled so we'll leave that material same stuff this is you know what you have to figure out speed my cr 10 s's are a little bit bigger they can't move as fast as an ender but comfortably i again i can float between a 50 and a 70 for something this big that's going to be doing a lot of x and y orientation oh need to make sure that's all the way on top um i'll do about a 60 on this and i'm, I'm okay with that same stuff z hop and retraction supports i'll actually look at this and so what it's going to want to put supports there there's a little bit of it under there and i think it puts a weird one somewhere up here sometimes so i don't want supports back here so what i'll do is i'll rotate this until they disappear kind of like that probably get away with oh i can turn off snap something like that you could do that looks pretty good and then it only wants some supports here and i'm probably going to block those out anyway because i've printed this enough times to know that my printer is totally fine handling that angle or what i can do is tilt it back and just throw some support blockers here so let's actually let's do that we'll put one here and we will scale it up like a monster oh okay i didn't i, I don't have snap scaling on but that that's perfect that worked out <laughs> and we'll put one here and we'll put one here because i don't i know for a fact i don't need that oh no well, let's put on uh uniform scaling again because that didn't like that Cool. So that's all blocked out. Oh, right there. Those two. Those those ones always get me. Okay. So what I'll look at here is just how much is going to be supported down there. And I don't know. That's uh, That should be enough. Uh, that's usually what I print with here. But let's go ahead and slice this now. One day, 371 grams. I think we were, what, 499 before? Look at that. A perfect bowl with just some support on the bottom. And to me... The, uh, the, the, the offset of you know time and not having to break away all these supports and trusting my print better is worth the trade-off for me having to now sand down and clean up the top of the helmet, which it's a perfectly smooth surface, not hard to sand and clean up at all. So that's how I'll send my helmets in about that quality too. And I'll do this whole same process for bigger prints as well, where I just, I examine them and I'll move them and just try to find whatever orientation looks best and safest. One thing I want to really elaborate on is it doesn't matter how good your settings are. It doesn't matter if you're using a perfectly small, you know, Ender 3 and you have the absolute maximum settings and everything's great and your quality is amazing. You have the best detail set up and you've done all the research and you know for a fact that, you know, somebody gave you a print profile. Hey man, I get that all the time. Hey man, what's your print profile? As you can see, I don't adjust anything except really infill and where my supports go. That's about it. A lot of people spend a lot of time developing these programs and figuring out how it works. What the people who develop this program have no control over is your printer itself and how good your how well built your printer is. And I don't mean like quality parts, like you paid you spent the most and you bought the most expensive printer out there. If your printer isn't assembled and tuned properly, your prints are going to look awful there's no way around that the best g code in the world the best settings in the world cannot save a bad print a bad printer from making a bad print your nozzle is only supposed to move on your x-axis in the x direction left and right and left and right your bed's only supposed to move in the y forward and back if your bed is wobbly if your nozzle's wobbly if your wheels aren't tight if you're binding if you're uh you're having extrusion issues because your um, extruder isn't built properly and there's too much spring tension uh your belts aren't tight enough there's so much that can go wrong with your printer in just a, such a simple small way that it'll ruin a print and you might come back to your G code. You might be saying, oh, I got to change my temperature or, oh, you know what? I'm, I need to print on a better quality because I'm getting banding. And 99% of the time, it's usually your printer that's causing these issues and you need to look at the hardware side. Software is great and settings are great, but you don't need this amazing, perfect G code to get a good print. So I, I hope this helps you guys understand what I'm looking for and what, um, what settings I'm adjusting and what I'm messing with. And it's not much. It really isn't. Um, you can you need to just test and experiment and figure out what works for you. I really like printing with my 6mm nozzle. 
I can push out a 0.3 millimeter layer height and not really have um, really big loss of quality and I can get speed out of it. And it's been working for me since, but I, I do like having the option of having an Ender as well as a CR-10S. This way I can do these little you know, detailed prints. My 0.4 millimeter nozzle on my Ender will make this arc reactor much nicer than my CR-10 will uh, just because of the size of the nozzle. But my CR-10S can do this pretty well too because it's built and tuned pretty nicely. And for the most part, it's a stock CR-10S and a stock Ender. It's just reliability upgrades, an all-metal extruder, a Capricorn Bowden tube, and a magnetic build plate. I don't have these crazy upgraded boards or direct drives or newer cooling fans. or uh, I don't have all this crazy stuff on them. Um, it's just reliability mods. So take the settings as, as you will, but just remember that your printer, the physical condition of your printer and your hardware do matter just as much, if not more, than your G-code. Um, I really, if you guys, I really hope this helped. If you guys do have any more questions, you know, you like always, drop some comments, message me on Instagram. Uh, I'll do my best to help, and it'll also key me in on what to talk about in the next couple of videos. If you guys haven't already, please maybe subscribe if this did help you. Um, I, I want to put out more information and help more people, and this is exactly the type of stuff that I, I feel is crucial um, to spreading around the community and just you know getting the word out there. Uh, I, I really appreciate all the support. So. Again, I hope this helped you, and that's it. So have a good day.